I am Jim Collison, and this is the Clifton Strengths Podcast Season 3, recorded on January 19th, 2024. In this Clifton Strengths podcast series, we'll look at how to feel more energized and motivated at work, one theme at a time, and today's theme is empathy. If you're listening live, uh, we'd love to have you join us in the chat, or you can email us your questions, coaching at gallup.com. Dr. Jacqueline Robinson is our host today. She works as a senior learning and development consultant, and join me for season one and two of the Clifton Strengths podcast, where we looked at well-being at work and our Clifton Strengths role-based reports, and those were awesome. If you haven't listened to them, you should. Jacqueline, welcome back. Hello. Thank you. Happy Friday. Oh, happy Friday. Oh, happy to Friday, you. Friday, as my positivity <laughs> always says. <laughs> That's right. Always great to be with you this season. We're talking about bringing energy. And a word I actually, I've we spent are. a lot of time talking about energy, but motivation is one, another one we put in the title. I haven't used that word very much. I think yeah. it could be, motivation could be applicable to today as we think about empathy. But let's get talking about the individual first. What are some ways an individual high, uh, high in empathy, can feel more energized by focusing on their basic needs. Ooh, basic needs. Clarity in the role, having the resources you need. Um, I think someone high in empathy can be tapped in and tuned in to what their needs are or where there's uncertainty around their most basic needs. And so what I think about with this theme is, you know, really thinking about that emotion you're feeling. If you feel like you are firing on all cylinders and you're super productive, Sounds like those most basic needs of understanding, you know, um, your key priorities and responsibilities are clear. Sounds like you've got the materials you need to carry those out. But let's pause for a moment and say that you feel anxious or maybe flustered. Um, instead of storing that emotion, how can you label it and get to the why? Why are you feeling that way? Um, what is it I'm feeling first and foremost? Is this anxiety? Is this frustration? Where is it coming from? What do I know to be true about this feeling? Are you catastrophizing essentially, or is there something really relevant there, really practical? Um, maybe you're anxious because there's a key responsibility you need to complete, but you don't have the, the resources you need, uh, whether it's a person you need to connect with or um, context on that key responsibility. Well, that's not catastrophizing. There's something very true about that. And that would allow you to then think about the next step that what's next? Who do I need to go to? Maybe it's my manager. I need to ask for support. Maybe it's someone I work alongside. That's the, you know, the team lead to ask for support. And then that's going to help you get back on track. In a lot of the seasons of, of the Clifton Strengths podcast, you and I spent some time talking about the me versus we, right? The theme, how it relates to me and then how it relates mm -hmm. outwardly to others. I think empathy is one of those themes that immediately always is the we without yes. the me, right? Yes. And, and I think for those high in empathy, especially as we think about individuals bringing energy and this word of motivation, I think as important as I referenced in the title to it, of understanding, uh, yes, empathy has that ability to understand how other people are feeling, but I think mm -hmm. if turned in on itself, this is maybe where empathy has been so focused on the outward. We need to bring it in a little bit yes. to say, how am I feeling right now in this task? I I'm terrible at this. I'll be in the middle of doing something and I'm feeling terrible. And then I just start taking it out on people <laughs> that I'm working with. Right. <laughs> and I think this is one of those areas for people with high, with high in empathy of understanding where they're feeling at the moment in their needs and being able then to express that in healthy ways. Mm -hmm. to their, like you, like you just said, to their manager, to their supervisor, to those that they're working with, or the teams that are around them mm -hmm. to say, you know what, right now, I kind of need this. Now mm -hmm. I even said that in a way that was a little forceful, but you know, being able to say, the, the, these are the needs I have right now. I don't know. Respond to that. Does that make any sense yeah. uh, to what I'm it saying? Does. Does that, yeah. It does. Um, I think there's so much focus on the, we, and you hit the nail on the head. And I really wanted to be cognizant of that for this particular episode, because we want to think more about your own energy, your own yeah. motivation and putting that, that air mask, that oxygen mask on yourself first, uh, so that you can support yourself, feel energy, which is going to give you the energy to help others. 
Yeah. Yeah. Focusing in, in those moments on yourself to say, mm-hmm. Hey, how am I feeling right now? And how may that feeling? Cause that's a chemical reaction inside of us. That's going to dictate the next set of reactions mm-hmm. that come out of us. Yes. Right. How, how do I approach, if I'm feeling this way, is it the smartest time to do this or is it the smartest time to do that? Or do I need to put something in place to make sure I'm bringing energy and motivation back to what I'm doing to get it done. When we think about empathy for the individual again, how can, how can, uh, how can they feel more energized by focusing on their individual strength to talk? I'm just mentioning a little bit about that, but, and development, talk a little bit more about that, Jacqueline. Um, well, someone with this theme, they can use that empathy to help understand their own career aspirations and, and the challenges they're experiencing. So when you do, you know, tune back into yourself and you consider the highs and lows of each day, where are you feeling the most engaged and happy? Where do you feel drained? And then what can you potentially delegate or eliminate that's going to give you back your mental and emotional energy, get you back on that individual development plan or that, that um, strengths pathway that supports you the most? I'm going to change that word. I'm going to insert that motivation word, Bo. But in what ways can an individual with empathy feel more motivated by building partnerships and finding purpose in their role? Yeah. Ooh, for this one, you know what I see is um, they're the natural champion for individuals. They're the natural accountability partner, support system. Uh, Because someone with high empathy has that sense of getting an understanding of the, 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 I would say the read of the room or the read of the in- individual in front of them, um, you really do find such a, a beautiful way of adapting to that person and supporting their needs. And I think that builds a lot of trust and rapport and respect because when you are just understanding where someone's coming from in that empathetic way, they feel listened to. We know that when you feel listened to, it tends to make you feel cared about and respected. And so I think by nature, you just start to build those bridges by having a sense of what someone's going through and um, coming through to support those particular needs, either as a thought partner or just that champion or, you know, support system for them. Let's make a switch over to the manager as we think about managing. How can a manager with with empathy support others with their basic needs? Yeah, fostering that work environment where team members not only understand their expectations, but they su- they really feel um, supported, valued, and motivated to meet them. So when discussing expectations, practicing that active listening, uh, paying close attention to your team members' concerns, um, their questions, the feedback, their you know overall emotions in the room, and I think that's how team members feel supported and valued to meet those goals because the manager with empathy can cater the messaging in a way that's going to resonate with the group based on where there's their emotions are sitting at that point in time. As we've been going through these questions throughout the season, I'm seeing where there's a sweet spot for some of these themes that, you know, where we ask the question and you kind of go, duh, you know, Mm -hmm. and this may be one of those for this, right. But how can a manager with empathy help others feel seen heard and valued as, as an individual. Cool. Again, we think empathy, you kind of go, duh, but talk a little yeah. bit about that. <laughs> uh, well, naturally they can be attuned to the employee's emotional states. Um, but let's say you notice signs of stress or burnout or disengagement, being proactive in offering support and resources can be really helpful. That's where your spidey sense, I think really pays off. You might catch those signs ahead of time. Um, or if team members are facing personal challenges that end up impacting their ability to meet those workplace expectations, being able to offer emotional support and resources to them can be helpful. Um, in either of those cases, showing empathy uh, for their well-being is going to help them feel seen, heard, and valued. Yeah, and there there might be uh, some questions that need to be asked. It, like it, mm-hmm. high empathy, we may get used to a pattern of being able to recognize it, see it and act upon it without clarity, without clarity from the individual. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we also may want to ask for permission sometimes as we Mm -hmm. think about, Hey, let me just validate some things before I say other things to you. 
Yes. Right? And are you feeling this way? As we think about being seen, heard, and valued. Yes. I think that adds to it, right? Hey, I'm fee- I'm sensing this. Is that true? Tell me a little bit about what's going on there, as opposed to just assuming it's true, right? Yes. Maybe you've been right in the past, and you're like, oh, I always get this right. Well, maybe maybe you won't always. My, yeah. I, I think this is where it ties into it, right? How can a manager with empathy build trust, inspire, and deepen team collaboration and community as we think about teams? Uh, well, this manager is really just naturally talented at creating that psychologically safe and supportive work environment where employees can feel comfortable sharing their thoughts and and concerns without fear of judgment. So maybe creating some open office hours where team members are able to process their thoughts and emotions with that manager's listening ear. Um, Where needed, help them name their feelings so they can start to process and regulate them more effectively. And again, as you mentioned, Jim, with with permission, um, if someone's coming into that room for open office hours and they want to sort through uh, just some workplace you know, emotions they're experiencing, that person leading with empathy can probably really help them. And then they leave the room and you feel like, oh, you know, not only do I have that trust and rapport with this manager, but um, they've really helped me reset and get back in alignment. So I feel more inspired to go out there and get things done. Um, And when you feel that sense of, you know, connection and inspiration, you're a much better team member. Um, you're much more capable of being able to carry out the mission and purpose of the company. So maybe one by one, we end up seeing them spark, uh, you know, kind of a, a fire within the team. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know why, but when you were talking, I had this, this idea or this idea cap popped in my head about empathy coming in hot on a team Yeah, <laughs> uh, and, and like, coming in and whoosh, I know all these things to do, you know, that we need to do or how you're feeling as opposed to maybe coming in not so hot on some Mm -hmm. of these to say, Hey, tell me a little bit that may give you a clue to ask the question of, Hey, tell me what's going on or is everything okay? Or man, you're feeling you you're (laughs) because I don't think people realize this as much. It's, it's okay to ask people why they're so excited. Like, Mm -hmm. Hey, you look great today. What is going on? Like, man, there's a spark in your eye there, man, there is a, you, you look like you're motivated. I think sometimes we always think that's only reserved for the, is everything okay? Mm -hmm. Um, you can say if you're feeling, they're feeling this way, man, you, you seem excited. What's going on. Yes, Right. And see how my eyes change when I ask that question, you seem excited, you know, and, uh, and, and that works. I think that I think for teams, as we think about inspiring, you can inspire a team when you come in, when they're, when they're motivated of not trying to re-motivate them. Yeah. Let that, right. Just say, yeah, man, you guys are very good. You guys are killing it today. Let's keep killing it. Type deal. So anyway, I don't know. Anything you want to add to that? No, I love that. I love that. It's, it's uh, the dichotomy where we can see those two spectrums. Someone might need to process something, Mm-hmm. Someone might be having a great day where they're high on life and happy to be there. Uh, yeah. and empathy can can play to both of those. Absolutely. You, you've done this to me in the past where we've been talking and it seems like, man, you're in a good mood today. Yeah. <laughs> what's going not, on? Like I'm not in a good mood most days, but, but of calling that out, I think can be a powerful motivator, right? It can build trust and inspire. Yeah, uh, last absolutely. question as we think about wrapping this up, how can a manager with empathy support the growth of each team member? Um, scheduling those regular one-on-one check-ins with their team members to discuss well-being, goals, and challenges. Use those meetings to offer, um, going back to the positive, recognition and support. Uh, what's getting you fired up? What's getting you excited? Who do you love working with? Let's talk about that. What makes that so energizing for you? Um, where can I be a support? Where can we start thinking ahead of more opportunities to um, make sure that you feel that heightened sense of engagement and well-being in the workplace. Let's put those goals in place. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's what I think about whenever it's we're you know considering empathy with the learning and development aspect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the opportunity, what I do best every day, and mm-hmm. understanding yeah. how that makes people feel right, because there's a there's a feel there's a a feel component to that to be able to think. Every day I get to wake up and start doing something that I was built to do. Mm-hmm. And listen, our lives aren't in a way where in most cases we get to do that 100% of, of everything that we do. But if we can 
win more than we lose. A, a manager, Harry Gallup, told me that when I first started managing. So you don't have to win them all. You just got to win more than you lose. And I think this sets you up as we think about all these things yeah. that we're talking about. These set you up to, to maybe win more than you lose. So let's wrap it. Any final thoughts on empathy, Jacqueline? Ooh, well, someone high in empathy, uh, you know, we might all have one of these individuals in mind, very good at being compassionate and caring for other people uh, or being that listening ear, harder to do for yourself. So if you have empathy, I would actually, um, you know, encourage you to going back to the oxygen mask, uh, putting that mask on yourself first, making sure you're attending to your own well-being, being attuned to what motivates you inspires you, gives you energy so that you can be consistent with incorporating that into your day to day. Um, and if things do get, you know, really heavy, uh, emotionally, whether for yourself or the team already having those ideas in mind of where you get energy, what's going to help you decompress is going to help you get through it. I think with that, we will remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources we do have available now in Gallup Access or even at Gallup.com. There's a search button. Uh, click on the search button and put empathy and you'll see a drop down. It'll say empathy theme. Choose that and all the webcasts we've done on empathy are available for you. There's some great learning opportunities. Listen, I know you listen because I get just today I got some feedback. Someone was joining one of our, our groups, our Facebook groups, and they, uh, I always ask, how'd you hear about us? And they said, cause Jim told me to join. <laughs> so I, know, I know you guys are listening. <laughs> we want to join you in the groups for coaching, master coaching. If you want to become a Gallup certified uh, coach, Gallup certified strengths coach, I say that right. Send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. If you want to join us for the 2024 Gallup at Work Summit, and why wouldn't you? We, we've got virtual and in-person options available. Check it out, gallup at work, all in word.com. And stay up to date with all of our future webcasts by joining our Facebook groups or following me on LinkedIn. I post those as well. I think you can join our YouTube channels. If you subscribe to that, you'll get notifications. Lots of ways to stay up to date. Uh, but most important, uh, just search Clifton Strengths. You'll find us everywhere. If you enjoyed it, hit those like and subscribe buttons and please share it. And thanks for listening today. If you're listening live, stay around for a little bit of a post show. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.